right, so I've said it hundreds of times by now, I'm sure, but I believe that every player should, should be a game master at least once, right? However, you can't just jump right into it. There's some things that you need. So let's go ahead and talk about what I feel is the five most important things to have or keep in mind when you are being a game master, not just for your first time, just in general. So the first thing you need is a compelling story or campaign. Now this can come in many shapes and forms. It can be a campaign module. Um, I've said it before, I'm not a huge fan of campaign modules, but they are great for first time uh, dungeon masters, game masters. No matter what tabletop RPG you're going into, um, the compelling story is a must. Not every TTRPG has campaign modules like Dungeons and Dragons does. But for the most part, with a little bit of help from a veteran game master, you can pretty much alter anything into another TTRPG format. Um, I personally like to homebrew, and I'll do a video on on you know the five most important steps on homebrews later. Um, but you have to make sure that your story is compelling because if it's not, your players aren't going to want to play. Which is why I say that for a first time game master, a first time dungeon master. A campaign module is probably going to be the best way to go. My first time DMing um, was a nightmare. Uh, I decided to jump right into homebrew, and I had never been a dungeon master before. Um, at the end of every session, everybody told me I was doing a good job. They said they were having a lot of fun. And they seemed like they were having fun, but I wasn't having a lot of fun. It was all over the place. I would never... I'd never been, you know, the note-taking uh, player before, so trying to be a note-taking dungeon master was just not going to happen on my first playthrough. So my second campaign was a campaign module, and it was so much smoother. Uh, so I do recommend campaign modules for first-time DMs. Um, but if you're moving past your first time, homebrew is so much fun. Um, but the next thing you need is an understanding of the game and its rules and all of its mechanics. Dungeons and Dragons especially has so many mechanics. So many. It is mind-boggling. Nobody expects you to memorize every single... I don't have every single mechanic memorized. It's just too much. It's too much. But that's where the Dungeon Master screen comes into play. A lot of people give you shit for using a DM screen. Oh, well, why do you need that? Are you are you fudging rolls? Well, why don't you just show us your rolls? You know, tell with you. Um, if I fudge rolls, it's to save your life, not mine. First of all, second of all, the DM screen has on the you know DM facing side tips and tricks uh, to keep you organized in combat, out of combat. Um, it, it, most of them have, like, the, the most used non-combat skills, you know, the, the, the skills that you get proficiencies in in making your character. But then it also has a bunch of the mechanics, like, how does grapple work, how does poison work, you know, stuff like that. It's got a bunch of mechanics. The bigger the DM screen, the more mechanics you have. Um, I know there's a lot of... DMs out there that make their own. Um, a good person to to look at for that is, um, I believe her name is Diana the Rose. Diane the Rose. Di I think it's Diana the Rose. I'll put a link in the in the uh, bio down there. Um, she's fantastic when it comes to DM screens. I, I love her DM screen. I need to go back and, and watch the video where she was talking about how she made it. Um, but I'm lazy. I've got a standard DM screen. Uh, I'd show you, but it's currently packed away because I'm doing a lot of, like, moving around. Um, which is why the whiteboard isn't back yet. It's coming back, I promise. But, um, DM screens are fantastic because they've got that. You can also have, you know, notes in your in your binder. I've got a DM binder. DM binder and D&D &D binder, but let me know that. Uh, I've got little, some little cheat sheets in there for, for some of the mechanics that aren't on my DM screen because there's it's not big enough for all of them, but it has a good majority of them. Um, so that's definitely something you need to keep in mind is you never know what mechanics you're going to need to know 
So have cheat sheets for yourself so you don't have to try and look up the rules or the mechanics. Um, any spells that trip you up as a player, maybe have them written down somewhere or uh, at least the page on where to find them. That way you know you can get to them should one of your players use them. Um, the third thing is, is so important. I probably should have had this one at number one. It is so important. It's communication skills. You have to be able to communicate properly with all of the players at the table. That's non-negotiable. If you can't communicate with your players, if you don't know, you know, if you can't talk properly, if you are too shy to be able to talk in front of groups, even friend groups that you've been playing with for years, you're going to have a hard time as a dungeon master, as a game master. No matter what TTRPG you play, Communication will always be key, and that's not just for dungeon masters or game masters, that is for players as well. Communication is key for this game no matter what. So if you're having issues with that, um, definitely work on that because I guarantee you if you're a player, your fellow players are getting irritated with your lack of communication skills, they're just too nice to say something. And your DM, if they're a good DM, they've been way too nice to say something directly to you, but I guarantee you they've dropped subtle hints. Because that's what we do. We don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. right? As, as a dungeon master, it's our job to make sure that everyone at our table collectively feels comfortable. Uh, and they feel safe. Dungeons & Dragons, tabletop RPGs in general, is a safe space for people to get away from the, the hustle and bustle of everyday nonsense. Um, so making sure you can communicate that properly, making sure you can communicate in a way that doesn't make anyone feel uncomfortable, makes everyone feel safe at your table, is it is the most important thing uh, that a dungeon master or game master could possibly ever have to do. So I will always harp on communication skills being important every chance I get. Um, the fourth important thing is is imagination, creativity, um, the uh, uh, ability to improvise. You never know what your players are going to throw at you. Even if you're running a campaign module, you might have to think of something at the top of your head, just a drop of a dime. You never know. Uh, I've had plenty of times where you know I'm running a campaign module. I've run Curse of Strahd. That's a very detailed out uh, campaign module. It's and my players threw me for a loop, and I had to I had to think of something on the spot, um, because even the the creators of campaign modules can't think of every little thing that your players can do. They don't know your players, right? I guarantee you, these these game writers they play Dungeons and Dragons. They may not play as much as we do, but they play Dungeons and Dragons because otherwise they wouldn't put so much effort in. Maybe not with you know, 1D&D, &D, you know, 2024 20, 20, Player's Handbook. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of work put into some of that, but man, I complained about that enough. Um, you need to be able to improvise, and being able to improvise requires a fair amount of creativity and imagination. You also need imagination and creativity if you're going to homebrew anything, anything at all, whether it be magic items, um, character classes for your NPCs, or just the campaign in general. Um, and, I mean, if you watch or listen to any of the actual plays, you've seen it with Matt Mercer and uh, Brendan Lee Mulligan, who, in my opinion, are the two best Dungeon Masters, and they're so vastly different as far as Dungeon Masters go, or Game Masters go. Um, but their imagination, their creativity, their ability to improvise is... Just probably the best I've ever seen. Um, so it's definitely a necessity. And the easiest way for you to, to get more creative, to get the, the uh, imagination and creativity flowing, is read a book. Uh, I always read for about an hour before any campaign. Uh, and if I don't have a book, like I've finished all of my books, I'll watch a couple episodes of anime. You know, something that, that I enjoy doing that opens the mind, gets me thinking about other stuff, thinking about, you know, the broader spectrum of, of how things can go, what can happen. Um, especially since my favorite type of anime is Isekai, which 
ties in very well, very well with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with Dungeons and Dragons because it's essentially an isekai. Uh, you are your character, so you're in another world. But uh, the final thing you need, and this is fairly important, it's nowhere near as important as communication skills, but it is still fairly important. Um, patience. You have to have patience because I guarantee you, even some of the most veteran players get confused. They get lost. They need some hand holding. I've never met a player that didn't need some hand holding at some point through the campaign. And I play with a lot of veteran players that have been playing for, you know, 10 to 20 years. I've been playing for over 10 years now. Um, and I'm playing as a player for the first time in a while, and I've needed some hand holding. Granted, I'm also playing an artifice, which I've never played before. Um, but, I mean, I'd probably need some hand holding even if I went with a bard, which is the class I know the best. Every single player at some point in the campaign is going to need some handholding. Sometimes it's minor, sometimes it's major. They'll need help. And if you if you don't have the patience to help them, you know, there's going to be some infighting at the table. And infighting at the table is the last thing you want because it's going to derail your campaign. It's going to make everything so much harder to do. It's going to irritate your players and make them not want to come back and play anymore. Once you lose one player, then you're going to lose a second player, then you're going to lose a third player, now you can't play anymore, right? Um, you need to be patient with your players because the last thing you want to do is get irritated with them or irritate them with you because it makes your life as the DM, as the GM, so much harder. So those are, in my opinion, the five most important things to have as a game master, as a dungeon master, whatever, in any tabletop RPG, not just Dungeons & Dragons, but any tabletop RPG. Um, if you can think of anything that's more important than those slides, let me know in, in the uh, comments below. Like I said, I will be coming out uh, with a video on the top five things that you need to help build a homebrew campaign uh, very soon. Like I said, the whiteboard will be back. I promise. I just have a lot going on right now. Um, putting my books back together. I got. I got to move these PlayStation games because I don't even have a PS4 anymore. They got to go somewhere. But put my books back together. I'm. I'm finally decorating my walls again. The whiteboard's coming. I promise. I know a lot of you are missing the the whiteboard uh, uh, schoolhouse version of my videos. I promise they will be back soon. I'm hoping to have the whiteboard back and operational in time for one D&D to come out next month. Um, but if you found anything here helpful, please like, subscribe, uh, share it to, to somebody that you want to be a, uh, your, your, your GM, you know. Um, because ultimately that's what I'm here for is to help you guys. If you have any questions at all, ask them in the comments below. I reply just as quickly as I can. I almost never sleep, so... Don't, you usually don't have to wait too long. Uh, thanks for watching.